Hi, I'm David Soper. I'm one of the technical marketing engineers supporting UCS management software and integrations with UCS management. Today I'll be walking through an overview of Ansible module development for UCS. To start, I'll go through some of the locations to find more information. I started with just a Google search on Ansible module development, and my top hit is from Ansible on how to develop and document modules. If I go to the how to develop a module link, I'll see development walkthrough. Documentation is a key place to start, and this is where I'll actually start some of the work specific to UCS. So for additional reading, please consult the Ansible documents around best practice. But now I'll switch over to the module development for UCS specifically. In the UCSM Ansible GitHub repos under Cisco UCS. And to start development here, you can go and you can fork this repo. And the Ansible documentation, again, has a lot of information even on how to use Git for this. So I'll provide a pretty quick overview, but a lot more out on the internet in terms of how to do this sort of development within GitHub. I have already created a fork of this repo under dsoper2. So we will go look at that repo now. So my dsoper2 Ansible, which is a fork from UCSM Ansible, has a similar structure to the UCSM Ansible repo hosted under Cisco UCS, but I've been adding additional modules here, and that is what I will walk through today. The core modules under development are all within the library subdirectory. And there are quite a few here. One thing to note is that the legacy modules, the previously developed modules, begin with the prefix Cisco underscore UCS. For official hosting by Ansible, Ansible has requested that we drop the vendor identification at the beginning. So the latest modules under development, if I scroll down to the bottom, are prefixed just UCS and the Cisco has been dropped. So the last few modules I have developed are these UCS underscore modules here at the bottom of this page. And the first one I will walk through is our VHBA template. And as the file name indicates, this is a module to configure VHBA templates within UCS Manager. And I'll now switch over to a terminal view of this and go through documentation and then later coding and testing processes for Ansible module development. If I open a terminal window and navigate to the library subdirectory of my UCSM Ansible module, I can go pull up that VHBA template module. And just to double check where I'm at right now, I will take a look at the remote locations I am pointing at. dsoper2 is my Git repo, and then my upstream repo, which is where I would eventually merge changes, is my Cisco UCS. And in the longer term, I will work to merge these into Cisco UCS. We'll also work to merge these modules into Ansible itself. And much like Ansible development processes recommend, I'm currently on a feature branch and not using the master branch or main development branch in Cisco UCS, but instead on a Ansible underscore PR or Ansible pull request branch, which is what I will use for pull requests back into my upstream Cisco UCS repo. And now I will go take a look at the VHBA template code itself. And we'll spend a little time walking through this and how to document the module code and test. So we will now take a look at the documentation section of this code. The documentation block is used within this code to document it directly and used by Ansible doc for any outside documentation of the module. And I'll show at the end what that looks like. Most modules will follow the same basic processes, names, short descriptions, descriptions, and then the key that I'll walk through is really what each of the options are into the module. First option here, state, describes present or absent. 
and gives the overall desired state of the resource being manipulated. The next major option is a template list. And this, as the documentation describes, allow multiple resource updates with a single connection. When I go through the code in a minute, I'll go through this in more detail, but one key with UCS Manager is that to avoid multiple connections in and out of UCS Manager, this module allows for direct list def definition in the code so that I can go and manipulate multiple VHBA templates with a single UCSM connection. An alternative to that is to directly specify each property in this module and then have Ansible initiate multiple connections as needed. And again, I'll show two different ways to do that as we get into the code section. Other main properties which either come in as list elements or by themselves if a single resource is being manipulated are the name of the VHBA template, description, fabric or which side of the Fabric Interconnect we're operating on, and then other options that are needed for VHBA template creation. How these names were arrived at, their descriptions, choices, all the other pieces of this documentation, those are coming as much as possible from UCS Manager itself. So now I will switch over to a UCS Manager instance and show where those names are being pulled from in this example. So from within UCS Manager, if I navigate to the SAN tab and go look at my policies, VHBA templates is one of the policies I can create. And if I come into UCS Manager and create a template, this is as much as possible where I try to match the names being shown in that documentation and being used in the code with what UCS Manager offers up from the, UC, from the UI. The documentation, while I'm using Python-based naming generally with lowercase and underscores, I'm as much as possible trying to match the naming of properties in the UI. So name of the template, its description, fabric ID, redundancy type, vSAN, template type, max data field size. As much as possible, I've tried to match those up with the UI. I have shortened some of them just to reduce the amount of typing, but in general, that's where I'm trying to pick up the names from and trying to use what the UI presents as opposed to the lower level XML. And when we get into the coding section, I'll go through the XML, but what we're trying to do is abstract away some of those low-level details into a module with names that make sense based on what a user would be familiar with within the UI. And to close out what this looks like, once a module is documented, modules can be installed within the default Ansible location and then the Ansible doc program can be used to go and look at the documentation for a module in a more user-friendly printed format. This is using exactly what's in the code to render the documentation, but I've got with which options are mandatory, what defaults are for each option, and then the name and description of the options and what is required or not required. So at the end of the documentation section, we have some examples which give example playbook usage. And then as we finish out that, we get into the actual code. We'll start in the main routine and walk through variable definition in Ansible and what Ansible does to check variables in their default and then the actual code to go and configure VHBA templates. So we've got a default UCS argument spec in use. This specifies our connection specifics like host name of the UCS manager instance, username, password, any other parameters related to the connection which are common between all modules. And then specific to this module, we will go and update that spec 
with our VHBA related parameters. The VHBA list will specify in list format multiple VHBA templates to operate on or you can specify each one individually. For each one individually, we'll give name, description, fabric, etc. This argument setup specifies the type of the argument, any default values, choices allowed, and this allows Ansible to do argument checking in a playbook ahead of any connections to UCSM. So while there are advantages in using the list format for operating on multiple VHBA templates at once, there are also advantages in operating on a single resource at once in that Ansible can do a lot more upfront checking ahead of any runtime checking by the Python SDK itself. With all of those defined, when I create my Ansible module, I will give it the argument spec. And this is where I can specify whether I've got list format in use or individual resource. So my required one of tells me that I must have either a template list or name specified. And I further restrict that with a mutually exclusive to say I can only have one of those. This will simplify my coding below to one or the other. This is all specific to a VHBA template and wouldn't necessarily be there in every UCS module between the list use or individual resource use, but other operations like VLAN creation, boot policy creation with numerous boot devices, etc., they may benefit from the list setup here to minimize UCSM connections, or these modules can be developed with individual parameters specified, and there's pros and cons of each approach. With that core Ansible setup complete, I will go and create my UCS object. This UCS module class actually initiates my connection and uses that Ansible module and all the parameters associated with it to establish a connection with the host name and return that login handle within this UCS object. That will be used later once I actually initiate connections to UCSM with that done, I come into the core UCS manager code where I import needed modules from the UCS Python SDK for VHBA template creation. If you're not familiar with UCS programmability, there are many guides on UCS programmability including how to do automatic code generation of Python and all the Python code used here was at some point auto-generated from operations in the UI. So there's a lot of power in what Python can do in code generation and all the specifics of which Python SDK modules are needed to perform any operations can be found out with that automated code generation and a lot more links out on communities.cisco.com for how to do that type of programmability with UCS. Moving down into the main code block, I have everything encapsulated in a large try block. It may not be ideal programming practice, but here I'm doing this because I actually will have multiple calls against my UCS login handle, and I'm doing general purpose exception handling. Any errors caught within the UCS Python SDK will be thrown as exceptions, and so to simplify the code, I've got one large try block and one exception handling routine that prints error messages. My initial if-else clause chooses between a true template list specified in the playbook or individual resources. And in either case, I end up with a template list, even if it's only one item, coming into the rest of the code. As I traverse the templates in the template list, which again may be one or multiple VHBA templates. I'll start by setting my default parameters. And as mentioned, as mentioned in the comments here, I do this to account for that list format where my Ansible argument spec hasn't necessarily set up all the defaults for me. So this is actually a repeat of what was done above in the argument spec 
But again, a lot of different options and how you would actually do this depending on the sort of module you're developing for UCS. And just to walk through one of these as an example, um, if my template type, either initial or updating, is not specified, I default it to initial template, and that is meant to match what is in this initial setup. So all the defaults that I'm specifying there in terms of fabric, redundancy type, vSAN, initial template, etc., those are all being done to match the defaults that are presented in the web UI. Continuing down in the code, I will next go and establish the distinguish name or DN for this VHBA template instance. And I do that with a concatenation of my org DN as specified in the module. Org dash root is the default, but can also be user specified. SAN connectivity template the shortened version in the XML API, and then my actual template name. And after I've created that distinguished name, I will go and query that DN in the Python SDK. And falling down into my next block, if that managed object exists, I will actually go check individual properties within the managed object. And to do that, I create a variable argument list, and then I populate that list with the settings that I've specified in this Ansible module. You may see that there's a mismatch in some of the naming. Switch ID, for example, was called fabric in my module, and some other slight variations like template type being shortened to understand how the specific managed object property names are arrived at, we can switch back into the UI and use one of the other more powerful features of our UI and UCS's XML API framework in general. And I can go create a test VHBA template, really only needs a name. Once that's created, I can come into the UI and view the XML for that object. And a few key things to note here. One is that the object class ID given here will match with case translation. Here it's camel cased in the Python SDK. It's Pascal cased with a leading capital. But those Generally, with the Python SDK being a language binding over the top of the XML API, those names are going to match outside of those case differences between Python and XML. This also will give me all the properties for the module. And again, need a translation from the starting lowercase camel casing of the XML API into lowercase with underscores for Python, but otherwise matching names throughout. So the properties such as the one I showed for switch ID for fabric. This is really a great location to come and see what those underlying property names are and how to translate from what is viewable in the UI to what the XML API uses. This also shows me the distinguished name for any objects I create. And this is where I can build up that distinguished name format with my org location name of the managed object and its specific location within the management information tree. Last item to note here is that this XML view does contain child objects, so showing a hierarchical view of this managed object. I also have a fabric interface in use here and shows me the properties associated with that. So once all those properties can be checked, I can go and run an actual Python SDK command to check for property match between the MO, which I've retrieved live from the system through that query DN, and my basically proposed managed object where I've used that variable argument list to fill in parameters. If I get a match on all of those, I can go and check additional sub objects as needed. And at the end of everything, I set my boolean exists to true or false. 
depending on whether or not my properties match. With that property checking in place, I fall into the core code of this module. Very short in this example, actually. If my desired state was absent, and I've determined that the current module does not exist, I will go and remove it. This is doing an exact check of properties, so depending on what how you want the Ansible module to behave in terms of exact property match or just checking for the existence of the top-level MO by name itself, you could change some of the logic here. But the key is, if it exists and the desired state is absent, it will remove it. If the desired state is present, I fall into the else clause of this module. And if it does not exist, but the desired state was present, I will go and create it. And this single function to create a VHBA template. And here I'm using some probably previously generated code, but just changing up the parameters based on what this module fills in with my with my location in the org structure and then my name, description, etc., all taken from the module itself. I also go on to create the sub I also go on to create the children of that object in the managed object hierarchy. And I've got another Python SDK function call to set up any vSANs associated with that object. And last, I add the object and commit the transaction. And that's really all the code needed. And to finish out this code, I have a basic exception handling block here print any error messages as is from the Python SDK back out through Ansible. I set my changed result based on what I did in the prior code and I return that result back into the Ansible framework. So with that overview of the basic coding, code generation, and where to get the XML properties associated with the object, I'll now go and take a look at how to test these modules with a playbook example. So my test playbook will use UCS hosts and within the tasks we'll come in and conf we'll configure multiple VHBA templates through use of my VHBA template module and a VHBA template list structure or can configure a single VHBA template directly by name and other parameters as needed by the user for that module. To avoid a little typing again, I'm referencing a login info variable within each of these plays and that login info variable is set here with my hostname, username, and password for my domain, and then a state parameter coming in. The state parameter is going to allow me to test both present and absent without having to change up this playbook. So all uh, not required at all in development of Ansible, but hopefully avoids a little bit of typing. Before I go and run this, I'll take a look at the inventory file I'm going to use and see where I set the different parameters used for hostname, or in this case IP, username and password. So my IP is specified here, and then after that username and password. Because I'm on a Mac with a different version of Python, I'm also specifying an Ansible Python interpreter value. Normally probably wouldn't be included in a playbook, but in this environment I'm using that here. So with my playbook and inventory ready, I will go run this playbook. And the last thing I will pass it is a command line setting of a variable for state. So Ansible's dash dash extra dash bars command line option will allow me to pass playbook parameters directly on the command line. 
And with this, I can go and set that present state or absent on the command line without having to change the playbook, purely for testing in this case, but again, meant to avoid changes back into that core playbook. And as this runs, I can see it in the background, change my state. And as was specified in the play, I've got a couple of VHBA templates, dash A and dash B specified in list format, and then dash A1 specified in the direct resource format. I run the playbook again, I should see no changes. And as expected, no changes. If I come in and modify one of these, setting a description, for example, when no description was expected, I can go back out and run the playbook again, and it will change it and go remove that description for me. And to finish out, I'll test with a state equals absent. Let's remove those templates, and I can run that again. This testing I'm doing manually, but part of upstream merge with Ansible directly does require integration tests. Similar format to what I just went through, but the idea is to run different states on the module and check, check for configuration drift and configuration drift remediation. So those basic steps of each of the different states verifying changes, et cetera, are what would be needed in integration tests for upstream merge. So that's an overview of the basic steps of document encoding and testing modules. For more information, refer to the Ansible module development guidelines or the following sites on cisco.com. Thank you.